good old computers. They're always a lot of fun. Back in the 80s, we had a really good time with them. The one you see in front of us here is the Atari 400. It was the computer that I used to get on the BBSs quite often, and that was kind of my early internet. I still like to visit them from time to time. And, of course, the computer bulletin board systems have changed considerably since the 80s. They've uh, added better graphic standards. They've added higher speeds. And what we're going to show here is for a computer like this you know, lowly Atari 400, which I greatly enjoy, there are ways to get around such limitations, mainly by you know, cabling up to another computer. To get where we're going to go today, I'm going to use a term program called BobTerm. BobTerm is one of those terminal emulators that has a lot going for it. It has great macros, it has great uploading and downloading. But the one thing it doesn't have going for it is actual ANSI graphics emulation. One of the problems you'll run into when you try to use a term program like this that uses something other than ANSI graphics emulation is you'll get a bunch of gibberish. This right here, all these numbers, would have been a very nice ANSI graphics picture. However, since it doesn't know how to read it, this is what it gets. There's a solution that I've come up with, mostly by accident, where you can take a lap link cable and you can connect it between the modem and the computer and another computer and have the computer do all the interpreting for you. Right here, you have a lap link cable. It has a DB9 connector, has a DB25 connector. And if we just look here at the cable, of course, all six feet of it, we have the same thing on the other side. Back in the 90s, they had to have a way to connect up the computers. This was, of course, before there was any kind of real you know, networking, any USB. But this cable right here was the greatest thing to connecting up another computer. The program that it used to support this cable would allow the other computer to be seen almost as another hard drive. I used it a few times back in the early 90s, and it was actually quite neat. For some reason, though, one day I decided to hook up my Atari computer and uh, actually try to connect it up with this, I guess trying to save a cable and whatever. I saw that they had the, the multiple connectors, so I just connected it up, and by a strange course of events, I actually wound up seeing typing on the other side, which I'll demonstrate here in a moment. Also, to use this effect, you'll need your varying connectors, especially a null modem adapter. That's actually a homemade one. This one right here is actually your more typical store-bought one that you can find, and there are better ones than that even that are more compact. The lap link cable itself is actually a null modem cable, and strangely, by adding these null modem adapters to the end of this cable, between these, uh, actually it's on the same side of the cable, the DB9 side, the DB25 side, and you add the uh, null modem adapters, you actually hook them into place, like so. You hook this one right here, and with that kind of setup, it actually allows them to talk to each other without the null modem connection. Meanwhile, on the other side of the cable, one side won't be used, but we will use the, the uh, DB9 to be used in actual PC, which will be doing our interpreting for us, and we'll be plugging that in the serial cable of that PC. Once you have a lap link cable connected to both sides, the result is a very, very wonderful one. Typing on the Atari computer, we get one side, and of course the result of the modem talking to us when it says OK. As you can see on the PC, we have the same result, and it looks pretty good. Yeah, minus the spacing, but eh, that'll work itself out in the end. As I type on the laptop keyboard, I'm getting nothing from here. As I type on the Atari keyboard, Q, 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 Q. See, that part's actually showing up. And it showed up on the laptop side as well. Using one of my favorite features on BobTerm, I'm going to select the directory dial and select one of my favorite com local computer bulletin board systems that actually has internet access and has dial up. Now, of course, being the prison board BBS. Once again, once we're connected to the prison board BBS, the information on the Atari side looks a bit confusing. It just looks like a bunch of 
ones and semicolons and zeros and so forth. Let's see what the way this was actually meant to be looked at once we switch over using the PC laptop's connection. Luckily with this Samsung SyncMaster 150MP, and of course there's other ones like it, this one has both an RF connection and a VGA port. This is actually what we were meant to see. This, my friends, is ANSI graphics, which of course is not all that impressive since it's been around since the early 90s or before, but when you're dealing with a computer like, um, you know, like my Atari 400 here, which does have some programs that deal with the ANSI graphics, just not with this kind of color, it's, it's a nice addition. Once you're on the BBS, you can actually go to the door games, the game menu. A lot of BBSs have them. Aside from, of course, the typical game of solitaire, I prefer the action menu myself. <laughs> Aside from Food Fight, my favorite place to visit on these action menus usually tends to be Legend of the Red Dragon, otherwise known as Lord. When I'm not playing Legend of the Red Dragon, one of the things I like to do is go to the Internet menu. Once at the Internet menu, I like to hit A for the Atari BBS list. And there are all of our Atari BBSs as they currently stand. This is a Telnet outpoint from the Prison Board BBS. So you can actually dial in with your Atari computer and then tailing that out to all these other Atari BBSs out there. The Boot Factory is just one of those that's not exactly ran on an Atari computer, but still fun to go to. All you simply have to do is then switch it to a task key mode. Here we are back on the Atari screen. We get to see this in all its glory. After you've gotten past the login screen, checked out all the messages, played Kingdom and a couple of other online games that they have on the uh, online system here we have with uh, the Boot Factory, then what you do is once you leave, just make sure that you just simply get things back to normal. So here we are, and of course, this is once again back on the Atari side. We need to switch this back to the ANSI emulation, get our screen back to the laptop view. Very ironically, here we have the ANSI, uh, ANSI graphics view, which viewed the Atasky as a bunch of gibberish. Now that we switched it back to ANSI, it's able to see the ANSI a lot more mercifully. And there we go. We're back to our ANSI color beautifulness. Now you may be asking, where can I find one of these Laplink cables? It's been since the 90s, and that's really, well, a long time ago for some of us. So, where can you find it? Well, I got some good news on that one. Many of us are familiar with eBay.com, of course. Here we have our familiar lap link cable with the, uh, the four ends that it has. And uh, the price wasn't too shabby. Looks like they're looking at about a penny so far, plus shipping, which means that, you know, penny plus shipping will probably come to about 15 bucks. The older computers, they're still just as much fun as they've always been. Same with the BBSs. And if you want your older computer to have a newer look, maybe enjoy those newer colors of the ANSI graphics, well, it's possible. It is a possibility. And it's really nice to be able to type at your Atari 400, 400 keyboard or what other type of keyboard that most people hate these days, and just have some fun memories, play some online games, and just really enjoy. Thanks for listening and thanks for viewing. Have a good day.